O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. For God invites us to live and love like Jesus, and in the power of the Holy Spirit to help others to do the same. I open my sermons with that. You've heard me say that before. That phrase invites us. Live in love like Jesus. Power of the Holy Spirit. Others the same. I want you to understand that it is a thinly veiled call for discipleship. It's actually a definition of discipleship, which often when you tell somebody, guess what? We're going to talk about discipleship. They go, I don't want to talk about discipleship. All right. I want to tell you a story, a stewardship story. Yes, it's that time of year. You notice in the mail or by email or your bulletin. But I hope you'll appreciate this. Because if I can live into this, it is that aspect of living into integrity and trying to make the very best decisions and trying to put things in proper perspective. And I learned this wise story from a man named Bill Stout. Bill was a bishop of our church from Alabama. He and a whole group created a whole approach towards how we understand the money God has given us and what we are to do with it and to teach us better how not to be afraid of it. And one seminal part is a story called the Pearl of Great Price. But before I get to the Pearl of Great Price, I'd also like to give you another piece of his wisdom and then something we as a group in West Virginia added to. There are four points to his core wisdom about what it is to be a follower of Jesus and then a good steward. And the fifth one is to how we live into it. But we understood it as sort of that integrity, uh, trying to apprehend best behavior piece. And so the four points are this. Evangelism calls persons to commitment. Worship celebrates that commitment. Christian formation teaches the meaning of that commitment. Stewardship is the practice of that commitment. Discipleship leads, that leads to apostolic action is the outcome of that commitment. And so when I'm inviting you to live in love like Jesus, I'm inviting you into that outcome where his love is made known completely and fully. And we do all these other things to draw us into it and to manage it as well as we can. Hence, the pearl of great price. So hopefully I got you ready, ready for that. This has its being in four movements for me as a story. When I introduced it to my friends in Wilson at St. Timothy's, it was in the midst of COVID and there was no way anybody could talk to anybody except by Zoom or by phone, or maybe really careful small groups. And a whole bunch of folks from St. Timothy's learned the first three movements of this story. And like me, made the fourth movement their own. You'll see how that works in a moment. So I want you to be invited to think about, could you learn the practicality of how to tell this story and make the fourth movement your own? So try to just embrace that in a moment. It, it has its basis in Matthew, chapter Matthew, and it's called the Pearl of Great Price because it comes from this particular piece of scripture. A merchant, upon finding a pearl of great value, but the antecedent is that is, the kingdom of heaven is like. The kingdom of heaven is like a merchant upon finding a pearl of great value, goes and sells all that he has. So the story talks about what it is to sell all that you have. So imagine, here's the story. I got a couple of characters in the first movement. So I've got the merchant, I've got a field. There's a pearl in the field, and I'm going to imbue the pearl with Jesus. That's like the love of God we have found in Jesus Christ. I just keep calling that Jesus. I have found in Jesus. That's a great expression. I found in Jesus. He wasn't really lost, but, but I found him, that, that old joke. And now the other character is, if, if I would like to acquire this field, I'd like to acquire this poor pearl, don't I need to find somebody that I can buy it from? So let's, let's, let's make that God for the purposes of our limited brains to try to figure this out. 
So we have that. And so somehow you have, me, the seller, I've come, you, let's pretend it's you. You've come upon the field and you find the pearl and you find that it's Jesus and you really want it more than anything you have ever wanted in your entire life. The complete, the fullness, the richness of all that God has to offer, building upon shalom. This is in the pearl, and beyond that, you are fine. You just, you have just been overwhelmed, and you want it, and you would like to acquire that. And you find the seller, and you say to the seller, "What will it take for me to buy the pearl? What will it mean to take Jesus?" And the seller says, "Well, it's very simple. Um, give me all that you have. So all that you have. Give me all that you have." Now. If you're like most people, what do you do? Give me all that you have, all that I have, all that I have, all that I have on me. Yes, here, take my wallet. Take my wallet, take my wallet. And, and so they said, well, that's very good, but that's not what I asked for. You, you look like you're going to need a little help in figuring this out. So now comes this rigorous inventory of all that you have. So one of the first questions is, um, hey, tell me, you have a house. You have a house, oh, how wonderful. Are there bedrooms in the house? The beds and sheets and things? Uh, is there a kitchen? Is there a kitchen in the house with like food in the refrigerator? And, uh, is there a garage with cars in it? Wow, I get all of that. And you go, oh, Jesus. Yes, take it. And the inventory continues. Um, do, you, uh, do you have a, a vacation home somewhere? Yeah, you get that up. How about some investments and stocks and bonds and things? And well, you really want this love, this Jesus. You, you can't, yes, you're willing. Give it up, take it, please. But the inventory's not done. How could the inventory not be done? Well, another piece of the inventory is, tell me, uh, you have a spouse, don't you? Yes, well, you take the spouse, stop smiling. And, and for the younger people here, i got to be careful with the next one. You have children. Uh, teenagers, yes. Werner at 8 o'clock gave me a nice look. Okay, so yes, teenagers. You take it all. But the thing is, by the time you're done, you believe that you have made the best deal you have ever made because you have found and received this complete and fullness in a way you never understood before, this love in Jesus Christ, this pearl of great price. And you start to walk away as happy as you've ever been. I was floating a little bit like Snoopy, you know, you seen this butter thing. And as you get a little bit away, you hear the voice. <clears throat> <clears throat> and it's the seller. And the seller. And, and the seller says, hey, just a moment. Now, what's your first human reaction? Oh, it was too good to be true. We all know how this is going to work out. There's going to be something here. And the seller says, okay. Tell you what, right now, all the stuff that you gave me, the house, the kitchen with the food, the bedrooms, the beds, the cars, mountain, you know, investments, money, children, wife, spouse, it's more than I can handle right now. So why don't you just have it here? So giving it back to you, sir. And you go, wow, this is a good deal. I've got the love of Jesus, the pearl of great price, and all my stuff back. It's like nothing changed. It couldn't be a better deal than ever. You really are floating a little bit more now. And guess what happens? <clears throat> and your body kind of goes, <sighs> the seller decides, look at look, look. Listen, all this stuff, I just want you to remember, it's mine. You're my steward. You're my manager. You're going to use it on my behalf. I may contact you when you least expect it, kind of thing, when I need to feed somebody with food in my kitchen. Or I need you to house somebody in a bed in one of my bedrooms. Or I need you to take one of my cars and drive somebody who's lonely somewhere to visit somebody in prison. You can see how this echoes 
the scripture Matthew 25 and 31 and following, when we see you hungry and naked, etc. I may ask you for my money to be used a certain way. You're my spirit. Now, that's taken us through the three movements. We now have an opportunity to look at our money as clearly not ours. We're responsible to God for how we do each and everything we have. And now this is where each and every one of our own stories can be connected. So I'll connect my story to this. I won't be here with you next week. The youth will be doing worship. I'll be at my 50th plus one year high school reunion. All right. Um, but the gospel that you have next week has my story in it. It's one of the passages about the rich young ruler. It's, it's, it's the one who knew an awful lot of stuff when he came before Jesus. Basically, Master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to follow you? And Jesus basically says, tell me what you know. Like all the rules and stuff. And he lists them right off. Boy, I, I relate to that one. I could get into that. I could list all of that stuff off. And then, and Jesus says, you're great. You know lots of stuff. This is wonderful. I'm so glad. However, there's one thing you got to do. It's not a like quote. Go sell all that you have. And then come back and follow me. But the scripture, as you'll hear, says, he was a man of much, basically much stuff, many things. And he could not. And he walked away, like off stage. Now this is where my story connects to his, I think. You see, in Mark's translation, Mark's gospel, it's just enough different than the other versions because in this one, there is the slight sentence that says, Jesus looked on him and loved him. If that love is pulling you, you can't escape it. It will find you. It will get at you. It'll embrace you. And I believe his story becomes like mine when he could come back and having sold all that he had, received more than he could ask or imagine. And then, because I'm the steward, still trying to remember how to responsibly remember that all my stuff is God's, and to listen carefully to God and how to use it, and just possibly, maybe, I might actually be a disciple. All these words I offer in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.